Motors are everywhere. From industrial machinery, to pumps, to hand tools, to HVAC, to automotive. Our world would be a lot less capable without electric motors that provide the rotation and torque to make so many applications go. Join Engineering 360 as we take a look at some of the primary differences between DC and AC motors, as well as how to control each. And as you continue your motor education or selection, remember that globalspec.com is your go-to source for easy, powerful search of all of your motor and motion control needs. Now fundamentally, in direct current, the voltage is always constant and the electricity flows in a certain direction. In contrast, in alternating current, the voltage periodically changes from positive to negative and from negative to positive in a sine wave. It's this constant flow of energy in the DC supply that makes DC motors perfect candidates for jobs that require stability and precise control of speed and torque, and what makes AC motors ideal for more rugged industrial and commercial applications. So let's take a closer look at DC motors. The two main types of DC motor are brushed and brushless. Brushed motors get their name from the brushes that create a contact with the commutator ring. When a voltage is applied across the ring, an electromagnetic field is induced around the coil on the rotor and causes the magnets in the stator to repel on both sides. This alternating polarity of the magnetic field induces the rotary motion in the motor shaft. In the majority of brushless motors, the coils are located in the stator and the magnets in the rotor, and they also rely on a three-phase input, hence the three wires that always poke out the back. Brushless motors rely on a particular arrangement of transistors and other components, which discharge to the coils in a particular sequence to create the repulsive force for rotation. Brushed DC motors are often considered the workhorses of consumer goods, small appliances, and automotive applications such as windscreen wipers. Brushless motors, on the other hand, are extremely low friction, making them more suitable for operating hard drives, robots, and electric vehicles. For more specific applications that require a high level of control, there are servo and stepper motors. Servo motors can come in both brushed and brushless configurations, whereas stepper motors will only ever be brushless. So now we've cleared up the confusion of DC motors, let's talk about how to control them. The brushed motor will rotate at a constant speed relative to the supply voltage of the power source, in this case 9 volts. We can start the motor, stop the motor, and reverse the motor by swapping the polarities of the battery. But only having a signal at high or low is clearly a very limited approach to control. We need a way to get the motor between high and low. Enter PWM, the most common form of motor control. PWM, or pulse width modulation, is a circuit that controls the amount of power that is given to a device by cycling the on and off phases of a digital signal extremely quickly. Varying the width of the high part of the cycle by using a potentiometer results in a different voltage across the device and therefore a different speed. Using the built-in PWM circuitry in the Arduino Uno, we can control the speed of a DC motor using a potentiometer. Just like this. Controlling the speed of a brushless motor would be slightly different and would require an additional component called an ESC or electronic speed controller. This is due to the absence of brushes and requires transistors in order to switch the polarities to control the speed. Okay, so that's speed control. Let's talk about directional. Ever heard of a H-bridge? This handy little circuit is made up of four switches, two in series and two in parallel, with the load placed between the switches. This configuration enables the polarity of the voltage to be switched at the touch of a button, just like this. H-bridge circuits are also used with brushless motors, for example in a remote control, using a potentiometer to reverse the direction of the motor and slow down an RC car, for example. Okay, so now we've got the fundamentals of DC motor control down. It's time to take a closer look at AC motors. The main difference between the two is the source of power. DC motors run on a single phase supply, whereas AC can run on either single or three phase, with the latter being the most common in industry, due to its ability to transmit higher loads. AC motors can be broken down into two distinct types, induction and synchronous. The difference between these two motors is that the speed of the rotor relative to the speed of the stator is equal for synchronous motors while the rotor speed in induction motors is less than its synchronous speed. 
This is why induction motors are also known as asynchronous motors. While there are a number of ways to control AC motors, the most common way is to adjust the frequency of the supply through an AC controller or AC drive. An AC drive is typically made up of a rectifier, a DC circuit and an inverter, taking the AC signal and enabling the operator to control the speed and torque of the AC motor. But there's a few key ways to achieve control through variations of this particular circuit. The first is pulse width modulation, a concept that we touched on with DC motors. The second is variable voltage inversion, or VVI. This is where the AC frequency of the power source is rectified to a DC current and then increased and decreased in discrete steps to imitate a sine wave. This way, operators can regulate these steps to effectively change the motor speed. This variation of an AC drive is commonly referred to as a six-step inverter. The final method of control is using flux vector drives. These drives require microprocessor-based controllers, software, and oftentimes encoded sensors to precisely tune the independent currents. Using this kind of drive enables the operator to control not only the speed of the motor, but the torque as well. But with this increased level of control comes a heavier installation and operating cost. So flux vector drives would only be found in applications that require this, such as winding based machinery for anything from thread to sheet metal. So that wraps it up for the most common ways to control DC and AC motors. Both types of motor play a critical role in many modern day applications and the proper installation and maintenance of this equipment is essential to keep operations running smooth. While we've only scratched the surface of motors and motor control in this video, make sure you go and check out the globalspec.com resource platform for more detailed information, as well as a comprehensive list of suppliers for all of your motor needs. We hope you enjoyed the video and see you in the next one.